So today in our notes, um, we're going to do two different types of proofs. One's going to be brand new, um, the second one, when we prove the angle bisector theorem. And the first one is not a two-column proof, but we're going to show why the Pythagorean theorem works. So we're going to prove that to be true, okay? And we're going to do that using similar triangles. So uh, the triangle all the way to the left, when we take a look at this larger right triangle, triangle one, all right, I'm going to label each leg A and B, just as it is in the Pythagorean theorem, and the hypotenuse is C, so this is the largest A, B, and C. When you draw the altitude to the hypotenuse, okay, you end up with two similar triangles that are similar also to the larger triangle. So I'm going to label this, again, when you draw the altitude to the hypotenuse, it divides the hypotenuse into two segments I'm going to call X and Y. So that means C is equal to X plus Y. So in the smallest triangle all the way down here, the hypotenuse is A, so we can put in the right angle, and the shorter leg is X. Put in the right angle. Middle size one. Again, that's a 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is B. And the longer leg is the Y. So down below, since the two right triangles formed by the altitude of the hypotenuse are similar to the original triangle, uh, we're going to write the proportions in comparing triangle one to three and the resulting equation from the cross product. Um, and also comparing triangle one to two. So in comparing triangle three, so that's all the way the smallest one, you're only given two sides, so I'm going to compare hypotenuse to leg, A to X. Going back to the largest one, number one, A to X would be equal to what? Right to left, right to left would be C to A, with the cross product being A squared equals C times X. And then in comparing 1 to 2, we only have B to Y, or B and a Y. So if I write B to Y in comparing that to the first triangle, that's equal to, yep, C to B. So we end up with B squared equals C times Y. So using the fact that A squared equals C times X. Please, at this time, we are... So, again, we want to show A squared plus B squared results in C squared. So if I substitute the, again, the CX, that's the same as A squared, so A squared plus B squared really equals um, CX plus B squared CY. And if you notice, CX and CY have a common factor of C. So if we factor out the C, this is the same as C times X plus Y. And what is X plus Y equal to? If we go back to diagram not a particular number triangle, but the first triangle. What's that? C. And C times C is C squared. Take a moment to read the um, three or more parallel lines being intersected by some transversal theorem. Okay, so that if three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals, so the parallel lines divide the transversals proportionally. So in this diagram, L is a transversal and M is a transversal. So the ratio of, let's say, A to B equals C to D. Can someone give me another proportion that would be true? There's 
more than one. Anyone give me another? You could also take a look at, say, A over A plus B. So part to whole equals part to whole. You could do, instead of A to B, you could do A to C equals B to D. You still have that same cross product of BC equals CD or AD. So let's take a look at the example. Uh, city travel in the diagram, or it's a city travel example. So in the diagram, we have angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3 are all congruent. So if all of these angles, 1, 2, and 3 are congruent, that means all three lines are parallel. GF is 120 yards, it's marked. DE is 150 yards, it's marked. Um, 300 yards, that's marked. Find the distance between Main Street and South Main Street, or HF. So say I call that X. So on this left side, I'm going to write the ratio of 120 to X. What would the right side have to be if I did 120 to X? What corresponds on the right side with the other transversal of the 120? 150. And then what corresponds with the X? 450, good. So cross multiply, we have 150x equals 120 times 450 is 54,000. Divide by 150, and we get x equals 30 or 360. So hf is equal to 360 yards. So read the next multiple choice question. It's a state assessment question from uh, a recent Regents exam. And then I'm going to ask you guys what your answers were. So raise your hand for choice. If you chose choice one, two, three, or four. So choice three is the fall statement. The angle bisector theorem. I think I'm going to do this the same way I did this with the girls after school yesterday. We're going to go over the theorem and actually do the examples on the last page before we go through and do the proof. So if we read the theorem, it says that if an interior angle of a triangle is bisected, the bisector divides the opposite side into segments whose length, so the opposite side would be here with the segments um, X and Y, it says they're in the same ratio, so x to y equals. Okay, that's in the same ratio as the lengths of the other side of the triangle. So since I did left to right, um, a to x, that'd be equal to a to b. So moving to the example first, then we'll come back to finish with the proof. Find the value of x. So this angle is bisected, so that angle is congruent to that. So the segments that are opposite, so 4 to 8, equals, is it 10 to x or x to 10? 10 to x. So cross multiply, 80 equals 4x, divide by 4, and x is 20. Number 2, the sides of a triangle are 8. 12 and 15. An angle bisector meets the side of length 15. Find the lengths x and y. Well, again, we know x to y equals 8 to 12. But can you solve a proportion with two different variables? It result in an equation, um, 12x equals 8y, and without another equation to solve a system, we can't do anything with this. So what do we do? Anyone have an idea? Yeah. Yeah, we rewrite one of the variables in terms of the other. You can do it with x or y. So if the whole length 
right, is 15, and this part is x, to get y, you just take 15 and subtract whatever x is or the other segment. So we can do 8 to 12 equals x to 15 minus x. So 12x equals 8 times 15, well 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4, 8 plus 4 uh, is 12 minus 8x, add the 8x, we have 20x equals 120, divide by uh, 20 we get. So therefore, y is going to be 15 minus 6, or 9. Okay. Last one, and then we'll go back to the proof. Uh, the perimeter of triangle UBW is 22 and a half. So that's the largest triangle. WY, that ray, bisects angle UWV. UZ is 2, which is marked, and VZ is 2.5, which is marked. We need to find um, UW and VY, or VW. But I don't want to rewrite them in terms of two different variables, as we were just saying. So I want to rewrite both the sides in terms of 1. I have x, y, whatever variable we pick. Does anyone have an idea of what we could label them? Zach? Well, subtract the 2.5 from the right here. Mm-hmm. And then do like x from other side and then 2 minus x. All right, so he's saying the perimeter is 22 and a half. Subtract the sides. Um, we know, so 22.5 minus 4.5 is 18, and 18 equals side UW plus um, VW. So you're saying call one X, say UW is X, and then the other one would be, as you said, 18 minus X. Now, um, we can set up the ratio 2 to 2.5 equals x to 18 minus x. So 2.5x equals 36 minus 2x. Subtract the 2x and we get 0.5x equals 36. Oh, I would add, so 4.5, thank you. I said this isn't working out, it's going to be over. Now divide 36 by 4.5. Oh, okay. 36 by 4.5 is 8. So x equals 8. So this is 8, and that is UW. Um, 18 minus 8, VW equals 10. Okay. So now to the proof. I'm going to move it up as high as I can to fit everything. So we're given in that question that we have triangle ABC and AD bisects angle CAB. Prove a proportion. We prove a proportion with similar triangles. So let's make a note that we need similar triangles. And let's work with the one given, and that is so the angle bisects or bisects CAB, so I'm going to call that a 1 and a 2. So I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Because an angle bisector 
divides an angle into two congruent angles. What else do we know? What else can we? We're not working with any vertical angles. We do have a linear pair. Let linear pair give us anything other than they add up to 180. We obviously have reflexive. So these are um, statements and reasons we always have, right? We can always use a reflexive property with vertical angles if we have them. Linear pair, we have them. Can we ha do we have anything? And we can state those. But they're not steps that we need, so I don't want to because this proof is already long enough. So we haven't done this before. So what we're going to do is if you do have a ruler, okay, we're going to add a line parallel to a given line segment or side of a triangle so that we have some uh, alternate interior angles. So I'm going to draw a line through point B. And how many lines can be drawn through point B parallel to AC? from the beginning of the year, the parallel line postulate? One. one. So I'm going to draw. There exists only one. So sketch it. If you have a ruler, you can line it up. So I'm going to draw this through B so that it's parallel to AC. And I'm also going to extend AD to intersect that line, I'm going to extend this. To intersect that line, I'll call that point E, just to continue in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, E. Now, if you drew, again, if you used a ruler and you did actually make it parallel, um, you'd have a different size triangle there, but I just sketched it by hand, okay? So we need to write, this is a new write-up. We've never added anything to a picture, and I'm going to state that BE, line BE is drawn so that it's parallel to AC. And AD is extended. to intersect um, the E at E. So in that statement, we're just explaining what we did. The reason has to be why we were able to do that. And that's the parallel line postulate. Parallel line postulate says through a point not on a line, only one line can be drawn um, parallel a given line. Now we have uh, some alternate interior angle pairs. So if AC is parallel to BE, Let's look at uh, transversal BC. So with transversal BC, we've got angle 3 congruent to angle 4. If I look at transversal AE, we've got 1 congruent to, let's call this a 5. So add that, we've got angle 1 congruent to angle 5, and angle 3 congruent to angle 4, because alternate 
interior angles are congruent when uh, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. We also have vertical angles, right? We don't need to state those, but we do have those. And the reason why we don't need to state them is because right now as is, these two triangles right here are similar by AA. Okay? So that would be triangle, I'm going to say... Let's call that ACD. If I do ACD, what would be the other direction? Triangle EBD. Good. And with the similar triangles, I have a proportion that's true. But the proportion I'm going to use, so AC that was given in the um, proof statement, that is, that is two sides. They're comparing AC to CD. So I'm going to compare the same two sides, but not in the triangle to the right, AB to DB, but in the smaller triangle that we just uh, made note of. So the ratio of AC to CD equals what in the triangle EBD? And that's because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So what is equal on the right side? What to what? AC over CD equals? Does anyone see it? So AC goes between the angles 1 and 3. What does that correspond to over here? 5 and 4. So that's EB over, again, CD corresponds to BD. Good. So BD. Very good. The only difference to finish between the given or the prove statement, that proportion, and this proportion, there's only one part of it. And that part is right here. AB and EB. Are they congruent? So by substitution, we can replace EB with AB and be done? Why are they congruent? Yeah, because angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, so what's true about 2 and 5? They are congruent by So if angle 2 is congruent to angle 5, then yes, AB is congruent to EB. And we can replace that and be done. So AB is congruent to EB because in a triangle, sides opposite congruent angles are congruent. And then 9, we're done by substitution.